Okay, I guess we'll get started. As we're on the, I'm standing between you and the party, so I apologize for that. I can't think why they put records management on the graveyard shift. Um, <clears throat> so uh, my name is Roy Weatherall. Um, I'm one of the founding engineers, and uh, in my current role, I'm the lead engineer for the records management module. Um, about 18 months ago, I moved to Sydney. So since then, it's been a really arduous, continuous barrage of barbecue, sunshine, and cold beer. So it's really nice to be here today and take a break from all that, as you can imagine. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, basically the future. I'm going to give you a glimpse into uh, what we're going to do next with records management. Unfortunately, uh, the talk's actually been scheduled slightly wrong because uh, my colleague Kevin is actually going to talk about uh, RM2, um, which is out in the wild at the moment, which is the new uh, records management module. Um, he's doing a talk tomorrow, so I highly recommend that, and that will give you some insight into what's happening like today and what you can do. Um, but what we're going to look at that today is the next step, uh, and that's what we're calling transparent records management. So we're going to look at the what around that, uh, what some of the issues uh, uh, around records management today, specifically um, the issues we see with our fresco, but more generally the issues with records management, electronic records management, and then we'll talk through what's next um, uh, based on those issues. Okay, and I've got a little demo at the end just to spice it up for you so it's not too, too boring. Uh, so how many people here are, have records management experience, either with Alfresco or at all? Just, yeah, OK, I'm getting some. All right, so, <coughs> so I'm going to spend two minutes and give you just a, a quick kind of intro into records management to give you some context for the rest of the, the presentation. Um, what I've actually got up on the slide here is my mailbox um, in Sydney. Um, and I'm going to use that as the real life example. So we're all adults here. Most of us probably own our own home, or we live in a flat, or even if you live at your mum's, you know, you're going to receive mail there. Okay, you're going to get. We all get torrents of uh, physical mail every day, uh, be it bills, um, letters, you know, from relatives, junk mail. As you can see, I've got plenty there. Okay, so this is all the content kind of flowing into our household. Uh, and what do you do with this content? Well, you, once you've grabbed it out of the mailbox, um, I don't know if you're anything like Bim, but I'll first of all, I'll flick through it to make, see if there's actually anything interesting. Namely, I not a bill or a tax demand or whatever. Hopefully, my salary check. Okay. Um, so instantly, we're looking at the things that are presented to us, and we're trying to figure out what's important. So these things that are important are important for a number of different reasons, uh, either because you know, we have to keep. Uh, you know, we have to make sure that we've we've got them in our hand because there's something important, like a, uh, a renewal of our passport or our um, our driver's license or maybe our you know hundred meters swimming certificate. Um, you know, something that we've been uh, we need to keep hold of, or it may be something that we have to deal with. So a bill we have to pay. Um, maybe something we need to keep for the tax man. You know, our salary check or our dividend from a shares. Okay, so all these different things become important. Um, and so in a way, we're actually doing every day, we're doing this sort of records management process of figuring out which of these bits of information coming into our house are important, um, which ones we then have to keep, um, which ones we have to keep forever, which ones we can keep for seven years and destroy. Okay? So in a very, very simplistic way, uh, that's what records management is all about. Okay? Identifying the things that are important and then figuring out what we're going to do with them. Okay? So what's transparent records management? <clears throat> what well, transparent records management is about making that thing happen easily. Okay? Imagine if when your mail arrives on your door, somebody's already labeled the things that are important. You know, maybe your, uh, you know, your passport has a little label on the outside saying, make sure you don't lose this. Okay? And that's what we're trying to achieve. We don't want tra records management. At the moment, records management it can be a difficult thing. One, for people to understand, and secondly, for people to implement. Okay? particularly from a user perspective. Okay? We don't want to have to train hundreds of users and make them understand what records management is. Okay? We want it to be completely transparent to them. And that way, we keep the records managers happy, okay? because they're getting all their records and all the documents, uh, all the important things are being looked after, and uh, those nasty users don't have to get in and mess it up for them. So that's what we're going to concentrate on today. So what we'll talk about now is just have a look at some of the the key issues, if you like. 
that drive us, you know, that, 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 that kind of explain why we need this transparent approach. So the first thing, you know, if we go back to the example we just spoke about, you know, how do we know what's important? How does a user know what's important? You know, when you get your, your mail through the door, you understand your world, right? You know what's important. You know which bills you have to deal with and which ones you don't. But if you imagine a user doing their job in, the, in a content domain, um, we're going to talk about um, <clears throat> the example of a uh, customer service uh, representative later. You know, they, they know their job and they know what they have to do and they know their job function. But they may not know from a compliance standpoint which of the documents they're working with are important. You know, and why should they, really? It's not their, their job, job role to identify you know, records that need to be kept. So that's one of the things we want to try and we want to try and deal with, you know. How can we how can we take that burden of responsibility of identifying the important records away from the user and hand it to the people that know, which are the records management team. Now, assuming you have a bright user, and they've been trained and they've listened to what you've said and they understand it and they can identify the things that are important in their in their world, then they've got to know where to put it. And um, I'm sure to many users, if they browsed a fairly comprehensive file plan, that's probably what it looks like to them. Just a stack of meaningless folders and files colored and annotated in various different ways. So that second, you know, once you've gone past the problem of what's important, you've got to understand where to put it. And again, the poor user, um, you know, doesn't necessarily understand how things are filed and where they should go. And it's not just the user that suffers in this situation. The records manager, management team have, the, have another problem because they're pulling their hair out because all these diligent users are desperately trying to file the things that they think they're important because they're trying to do a good job. And they're just putting them in the wrong place or they're missing information. Okay? So again, we want to uh, take that burden away from the user and, and give the control back to the records manager okay? because obviously the records management team know exactly where it should go. <clears throat> so um, another issue with records is obviously records are primarily a, a record of kind of business activity. Okay, that's one of the, the, the one of the things that they're, they're primarily used for to to kind of you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of um, protect uh, organisations from you know people always think of litigation, but it isn't just that. It's also justifying the decisions you've made as a business. Um, if we go back to the example of your post. You know, you'll often file away, if you're anything like me, you have a little filing cabinet and you file away the information that you know you need to keep in ca for your tax return. Okay, and once you've done your tax return, you'll keep that for a while in case the tax man phones up and says, I don't believe you. And when he phones up and says, I don't believe you, you want to be able to go to your filing cabinet and pull all that relevant information out quickly. Okay? And that's all down to the way that you file the information. So you need to be able to find records quickly and easily. Okay, but it isn't just uh, retrieval from a records management point of view. The users still need to have visibility of where these things have gone, okay, so that they can still work in the context of their job role. Okay? So it's one of the things that Alfresco doesn't do well today is keeping records in the context of the, uh, of the user's world. Okay? We, we, we sit on top of a, a normal Alfresco search. You know, and, and in 201, we, we can utilize Solar, so we've got all those wonderful search capabilities so we can retrieve things, but we also in the future need to keep records in the context of the user's world, okay, so they can still continue to work. <clears throat> and this is really the bottom line, I, I feel, that there is still a job to do. You know, there's no point in us producing a records management solution if it stops users from doing their job. Okay, because people are paying them to do a specific job, not to organize records and watch out for records. Okay, and I think that, if anything, is the key message from what is uh, trans trans sorry, transparent records management. It's basically records management that lets the users carry on with their job. Okay, and that's what we want to try and achieve. I've spoken a lot about the, about the users, but obviously there's a records management team that hopefully um, doesn't look like this. But unfortunately, I think that's possibly often the case. Now, particularly if you imagine we've solved all these other problems and the users live in a, a nice fluffy, I won't use the word cloud because that overload it, and a nice fluffy world where they don't have to do anything and the records, all the documents, all the important information flows towards the records manager. Okay, They're going to get buried under a sea of electronic 
records trying to deal with them. So all this time while we're trying to free up the user to do their job, we're trying to also keep, give as much control as we can to the records management team so that they can control all this information and records coming in in a sensible way and they don't get overloaded. So <clears throat> those are the, the kind of the, the key um, issues we're trying to resolve. Okay? And, and, and there are obviously a lot of other things that we want to do, and what I'm going to focus, what I'm focusing on here is, th is those key issues, okay? Because we feel that if we can, if we can fix those, that gives us a, a very good kind of baseline for the product. So, with all that in mind, um, what we've been doing is then trying to translate that into key features that we can add to the product to plug that gap, okay? And, that, and that's really what we're going to be doing next. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of talk you through, there's about five or six slides of this nature, and I'll talk you through the kind of the, how those translate into key features. Now, did, how many people here are actually familiar with the current records management product in Alfresco? Okay. All right. So that's, this is information, I'm afraid, it's probably going to be more relevant for them, um, but I'll try and put it in some sort of context. So... Um, the, the first thing we get, the, the absolute kind of like uh, the key feature, if you like, is going to be what we call in-place records. Is anybody here familiar with SharePoint's RM solution? Okay, ish, okay, well that's probably good. Um, so they, do, they use the, the term in-place as well. Um, and, and it kind of means the same thing. I, I think ours is probably closer to real in-place. Um, <clears throat> So in the current solution, you effectively have um, your document management world with your collaboration sites and your repository, and you have basically a filing cabinet we call a file plan. And when something becomes a record, you take it out of your collaborating kind of environment and you place it in your file plan, in your filing cabinet, and it's now a, a record. Okay? Um, now this is not ideal for a number of reasons, primarily because it requires the user to know where to put it, they have to identify when it's important, but also it means it's disappeared out of their kind of working environment. So they've lost the context with the other documents that may not yet be records. Okay? And so in-place records management kind of is, is an attempt to resolve this. And what you're looking at here is just an ordinary uh, document library. There's just two documents there. And, and you can see there is a create record method. Oh, sorry, not method. What am I talking about? Action. And that will allow the user um, assuming they have the correct permissions and capabilities to press that button and this thing will become a record. And that's all they have to do. Now if you know the current solution then you're prob there's probably a whole bunch of questions you've got about where that, that document goes and how does it get filed and we'll kind of come to that in a minute. Um, but from a user standpoint in terms of manually creating a record that's all they will need to do. So that addresses the um, kind of where do I put it they don't have to know where to put it. It doesn't address what, what is important. Okay? In order to do that, we're going to fall back on something that we use a lot in the product and has been there for a long time, and that's the capability to add content rules. <coughs> so uh, who's familiar with what a, what a rule is in Alfresco terms? Most people. Brian, good, I'm glad to see that. Um, <coughs> so all we're really going to do is fall back on the same mechanism but provide you know, the ability to create a new, new record in an action. Okay? So that means that the, uh, the administrators of that, that workspace, of that, that, that collaborative environment, who will have to work with the records management team to understand what is important, or can in invite in the records management team to, to actually organize these rules. But the point is that they can apply rules to, uh, <coughs> to the users and to their workspace so that uh, documents are automatically made records when certain conditions are met. In this, in this kind of you know, mock-up here, we're saying anything that's a purchase order that enters this folder must be a record. Okay? In reality, it's probably going to be something more sophisticated, like when this thing is uh, published or you know, when uh, it's tagged in a particular way. But obviously, you can fall back onto the, all the capabilities that you'd get with normal kind of rules. Okay? So that kind of gives us a mechanism for constructing uh, the work environment, the work hierarchy, such that uh, things become important, they become records based on the rules that have been applied for the user. So again, the user really doesn't have to do anything and they'll just see things starting to light up as records as they work. 
So that deals with the, in my head, the left-hand side of the problem, which is um, how do we get, how do we stop users from having to know what a record is, and how do we kind of augment the normal environment uh, with records management rules? But those records are going somewhere, right? Um, and and what happens to them is they effectively fall into what we call in, in the present. There's a bit of inconsistency here. We call them new records. In the in the demo, you'll see we call them unfiled records. But essentially, they're records that they're documents that have become records but have yet to be placed in the actual cabinet. Okay, they kind of feel like they're sitting on the virtual uh, on on the virtual desk of the records manager. It's literally your pile of posts has been taken out of the letterbox and placed on your desk for you to sort. Okay, and all the junk mail's been thrown away. All right. So they're all sitting there, and then the records management team can decide to where to file that record, so where to place it in the filing cabinet. Or they can, they've got the option to reject it and say, well, I don't know why this has been made a record. You know, I'll reject it. Um, there is also, there will also be an option to request more information, which is the kind of, we don't have a kind of, uh, uh, any details on that in this presentation, but that's kind of like the third thing that we'll probably add, which is a way of kind of gathering more information from the users about a record, which is another common problem. You know, uh, <coughs> records managers will receive uh, records and before they can declare them, they have to complete, you know, the sum total of the useful metadata that's required to kind of describe what that thing is. And often, <coughs> you know, they simply won't know that because they don't understand the context in which that document's being used in the business. So we'll provide kind of a workflow to retrieve that information. So <coughs> obviously, at the moment, you can imagine all these documents flowing into this new record um, kind of list. And the records management team is starting to drown in this kind of, you know, uh, as in that picture, this pile of virtual, uh, virtual paper. So again, we're going to fall back onto rules to help us do this. So this means that uh, the records management team can define a number of rules on these incoming records to help automatically file them. But not just automatically file them, but also um, maybe move them into a constructed uh, uh, folder structure. So if you take the example of um, you know, financial records that flow in you know, automatically from the financial team's site, uh, they may be based on a quarterly, they may be filed in a quarterly basis. So you can set up rules to not only put them in the right folder, but if that folder doesn't exist for this quarter, kind of create it. Okay? So you get <coughs> a step towards automatic filing. All right? Obviously, there are going to be situations where uh, you know, the incoming records don't fall into the categories of the rules that you've defined, and they will have to be dealt with manually. But hopefully, that means we can reduce this kind of this big stack of uh, stuff to do for the records manager down to the things that actually need their attention. Okay, so I'm trying to see some of the examples. So, in this example, we're saying you, know, you may have a you may know that all contracts have to be filed in this location automatically. Okay, you may be able to set different um, uh, you know, the disposition authority automatically. You may be able to declare records automatically. But again, we're falling back on, you know, uh, sort of old school, al fresco, well-known techniques of basically providing rules. Um, and obviously, you know, we have all the action hook points so that you can add your own custom kind of records management um, behavior. So, <coughs> so I'll come back. So that means that we've got, potentially, if we have rules on the content site and we have rules on the incoming records, that means potentially we have a flow all the way from the user doing an action, automatically triggering the record creation all the way to it being filed. Okay, and that's all been those rules that define those are always been pre predefined, and the user and the records manager has really had to do nothing other than set things up. Um, so yeah, we've already spoken about the information request, um, but yeah, this obviously allows the team just to gather more information in, in a kind of controlled way. Um, so that's probably not a bad thing. I'm going quickly, right? As it's the end of the day. Um, so what I'm going to show you now, um, this is a live uh, prototype. There's nothing up my sleeve, um, and it's a kind of a glimpse into the future. I mean, we're literally. I'm going to be starting development on this on Monday when I get home, assuming I'm not too jet lagged. Um, um, and this should give you a quick kind of glimpse into the future, hopefully. Um, so. To kind of give it some sort of real life um, context, um, we're going to be we're going to pretend that um, we're a part of a customer service team. So Michelle is a customer service officer, okay, 
And her job is to deal with purchase orders, process purchase orders, and deal with sales requests. And that's it. In this example, that's it. Okay. And she's obviously a member of the customer service site. <clears throat> and the customer service site um, is set up this way. There's, there's a slot for purchase orders and a slot for sales inquiries. Um, and the team is organizes themselves into folders. And uh, each of the members of the team has a, a folder with the purchase orders that they're working on. Okay? That's just how that part of the business just has decided to work. Okay? And at this point, again, we're talking about a normal collaboration site. There's, no, 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 uh, there's uh, kind of no uh, records management uh, specialties at this moment. So um, what we'll do is let's just drag in a new, uh, oops, sorry, new purchase order into, and I made it horribly complicated. And that's not going to work. Hang on. Sorry. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. So let me just uh, grab one of my example um, records. There's my purchase orders. Let's take one of those. We'll just upload that. Uh, so that's popped in the purchase order into my working area. Um, now, if we go and have a look at the uh, properties here, we'll see there are some additional properties. And again, this is a content extension, okay? Nothing to do with records management. All I've said that is when, when a um, piece of content is dropped into this area, it's downcast to a purchase order type. And I've adjusted the form configuration to show these additional properties. Okay, so it's just a normal content extension. So Michelle's job is to then, you know, go to liaise with the sales team or go into the sales system. Um, you know, it's going to look at the purchase order. It's going to assign it an order ID. It's going to cross-reference the uh, customer ID, uh, add the order quantity, and, and set the delivery date. Okay? So, you know, that's, that's a kind of working day, you know, liaising with all the different teams. Now, at some point, that purchase order has been filled in. Um, and the last step in, in, in her sort of job process is to then uh, go through the system, print out the sales confirmation, and send it back to the client. Okay, and when that's all done, she's just going to mark this and say the sales confirmation has been sent. Now, what she doesn't know is when when the sales confirmation has been sent, this purchase order is now uh, a record. Um, and if we refresh that view, we'll see that it's now a record. Okay. <coughs> now, obviously, because it's a record. Um, it's not yet cut off or anything, so she can still edit the details because it may be required that she has to add some more information before it's declared. But essentially, that thing is now under the control of the file plan um, <coughs> and therefore um, is, is uh, uh, controlled by all, all the security that relates to records management, which is why we have this restricted list. So, you know, Shell goes on about her job. She still has that in context and she can see it. At some point, it may not be relevant for her to, to see that anymore. And we'll have an action that kind of says, just hide the record, and it will go from her view. All right? So at that point, that's become a record. Um, let's, uh, so if I, uh, let me just uh, quickly add the other one, and we'll, uh, so again, I've already filled in some of this, so we'll just mark that one as a record, and we'll keep that for later. OK. So obviously, in the real world, most people work in email. I mean, I think that's probably where most, uh, most of the kind of the records come from. And with this new approach, it means that we can uh, easily leverage all the, all the uh, kind of techniques that we no use in normal alfresco. OK, so you can see here down the bottom, um, at the top I've got the, um, uh, just the normal email account. And down the bottom, I'm using the um, IMAP mapping stuff in, uh, in, in alfresco. So I've mapped um, alfresco into my inbox. So this means I can do. So it means if I can deal with purchase orders directly in my email. If I receive a purchase order, shows that receives a purchase order, um, you know, from a customer in the form of an email, she can simply grab that and and drop it into her purchase order folder to deal with later. Okay, and that will uh, <coughs> now appear over here if I refresh that. Okay, and then she can deal with it in the same way, and it will eventually become a record. Okay. What she can also do, obviously, she's going to receive sales inquiries uh, in her email. 
Um, and it may be that, here you go, there's a question about raw materials, for example. Um, and she may reply to that. Um, <clears throat> and now she's been well trained and she knows that if she replies to a customer inquiry, she also has to forward it to the repository. Okay? And what I've done is I've used the standard, uh, there's a technique for inbound emails. I don't know if you've seen it. You can alias a folder in Alfresco. And if you send an email to that uh, alias, it, it gets forwarded into the repository directly. Okay. Again, this has nothing really to do with records management, but this is to show that with these new techniques, we can leverage all the stuff that's already there. Okay. So you'll, hopefully you'll see what I mean. So Michelle answers the, uh, the email, and she's going to send it to inquiry at temp.com. Temp.com is just the, uh, uh, the name of the server, and she can answer the questions like that, and she sends off her email. All right. She doesn't have to think about it anymore. Now, all being well, assuming all the DNS stuff has been set up correctly, um, if we go back into uh, the website, you can see what's actually happened. Fingers crossed. There you go. Um, that email, email alias has been set up to dump things into this uh, via email uh, folder. Um, and it's automatically become a record, because that's, we know that any sales inquiry that's been answered should be a record. So you're probably wondering, you know, uh, where these uh, sort of record rules are, are coming from. So let me just quickly show you that. Um, so if I log out of there um, and I log in as the customer service uh, manager, and I'm obviously there an administrator of this site, okay? Because they're the ones that kind of control the working environment. So if we go and have a look again, <coughs> you may have noticed this little symbol here, which means that this folder has rules applied. So if we go and see, have a look at the rules that have been set on here, <coughs> we can see there are two. Uh, one that says any content that lands anywhere in this directory structure must be a purchase order. And that's how we get all our additional properties. But secondly, it says uh, when the sales confirmation has been sent, this, this is now becomes a record. Okay, And that's how those things kind of automatically trigger. Um, again, if we go back and have a look under sales inquiries and, via, and the via email um, part, we'll see it just says anything that comes in here is a record. Okay. So that's all well and good. So that's our, our user working happily, creating records without care in the world, basically. Uh, our customer service manager is happy because they've liaised with the records management team and they've been told that they're doing a great job because they're capturing all the records in the right way. So if we go and have a look at uh, uh, what the records manager is doing. So, um, now the first thing to know is that the records manager, um, if we go and search for sites, um, he can't see. He has n he can't has no access to the customer service site. Okay, and it's an important thing to kind of note because in a lot of solutions we concentrate very much on isolating the user from the records management team, but we don't concentrate on isolating the records management team from all the content sites out there. Okay. We don't necessarily want the records manager to have to understand all the different ways that people work in an organization. It may make sense to get them involved, but they don't have to be if they don't want to be. So in this example, to prove the point, they have absolutely no access to that private site. So if we go jump into the records management site, um, and we go and have a look at the file plan, um, there's my file plan all set up. And we'll notice there's a new filter down here called Unfiled Records. Uh, and these are the records that have been flowing in from the user's activity. Um, those of you that are a bit more observant will notice that there are three, uh, sorry, there are only two, and we've actually created three records um, in this uh, demo so far. Um, but I've actually got a rule already set up on here to kind of help the records manager. And it basically says any purchase orders for Alfredo automatically get filed into a particular folder. Okay, so that's actually looking at that customer ID field. Um, so if we come back in here and we go into the customer service area of our, of our file plan, there's the purchase orders for, for this year. Um, they're organized by, uh, by customer. And there you can see that thing has flown all the way from the user ticking a box all the way through to the right location in, in the file plan. Okay, and nobody's had to do anything other than set those rules up. In actual fact, as it's gone through, I've actually kind of filled in some of the information, and I can just simply declare that already. So you can imagine, again, in that process of it flowing through and through those records, 
we can actually extract information that currently you have to enter by hand um, <coughs> and make it very easy to declare stuff. Okay. Um, if we go back to um, to the unfiled records, um, we might just say, okay, we can simply, uh, at the moment in this prototype, it's actually uh, a move rather than a file, um, but we can move that um, into that particular customer uh, folder, and that essentially files it. Okay, And that will then be under the control of whichever disposition schedule has been defined. I think, I can't remember what I put, these might be uh, cut off after a year or something like that, but we should see. I'm probably going a little bit off. Let's have a look at the details of that. Um, if it will let me scroll. Let's have a look. There we go. So that it's picked up that disposition schedule. Cut off at the end of the year and hold for seven years before destroying. Okay. So um, that's essentially the prototype, and that's essentially the, the key features that we're going to add in 2.1. Uh, and hopefully you can see that um, with, a, with a few kind of key bits added, we can start to really kind of integrate it into the rest of the product and kind of uh, make use of all the great features we already have in Alfresco. Um, so, so I love it when a plan comes together, uh, except I don't have a cigar. So what is the plan? The next step is uh, 2.1, uh, which will cover, as I said, these functional gaps. Um, we're expecting that to be early next year. Um, I suspect it will be uh, shortly after the 4.2 Enterprise release, um, and it will probably be dependent on that. Um, after that, <coughs> I mean, that the, these are the kind of like the headline features. We've obviously got a, a lot of kind of you know back office features, lots of uh, refactoring and uh, architectural kind of stuff we want to do to push things forward. That will also happen. Um, after that, um, some of the key uh, things on the roadmap include composite records which will allow us to construct um, records from sort of fragments of content. Um, that will allow us to do things in the future like take an entire email conversation and treat it as a single record, which would be quite powerful in this example, if you imagine. And, you know, and exchange backwards and forwards of emails about a particular sales inquiry where lots of information maybe about pricing or whatever that will be automatically captured in a single record and treated as a single record. Um, it will also lead the way for us to be able to do things with social records. So, um, you know, capture conversations and documents, for example. Uh, maybe capture version history as a sort of a, a structured record. Um, uh, also, there's a, there's a whole host of other bits and pieces that we can do, but I won't, I won't bore you with all of that. Um, if, if there's anything in particular that you've got in your mind and you want to know whether it's on the roadmap, then maybe just capture me at the end and, uh, and I can bore you about my opinions on it. Um, so I don't know how we're doing for time, but as I said, I don't think it matters if I finish too early. Um, but we've got plenty of time for questions, uh, if there's anything that you guys want to know about what you've seen or anything else records management related. And it is a bit late in the day. But I'm here all day tomorrow. I so, a yeah. Did that year not file? Um, does that preview? Um, that's a good question. I think it does. If I, it seems to, if I send it yeah. rather than drag it, it seems to preview. Yeah, but I'm not. This is. I don't think I'm on the latest base Alfresco. I think this is on like four zero two. That in that preview example, I'm not sure. Yeah, but that's yeah. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. It's not necessarily anything that we do in RM. That's just um, cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it depends some on whether it came from Outlook or uh, uh, some other client and whether it was dragged in versus a defense group or it's been a little bit more. But that's nothing to do with our content. No, no. But yeah, I noticed the same because I hadn't really played with it quite as much as I have recently um, for, this, for this demo. And I saw the same thing, yeah. Certainly the email, email aliasing seems to be a l lot better than the IMAP integration. So that way, it's my experience. Yeah. Possibly more useful. Yeah. Um, that's entirely up to your disposition schedule. So, um, as I say, I, I guess this, this presentation does assume a certain amount of knowledge about how we already do things. Um, but that, that filing structure, that file plan, 
um, at any point on that file plan, you can uh, attach what we call a disposition schedule, which describes how the document, or how the record should be treated at the end of its life cycle. So you'll say, you know, in that example, we say it must be cut off at the end of the financial year, and then you hold it for seven years, and then you destroy it. But obviously, that the way you define that is is completely arbitrary. It can be based on any time period, or on an event occurring. Okay, so it could be, you know. For example, you know, employee records may be uh, you know, cut off when the employee leaves. Okay? And that event can be manual or it can be automatic in theory as well. Okay, so you can essentially model almost any kind of uh, nuance of that as you like. Okay. All right, as I say, I'm around all day tomorrow, so if after a few beers tonight, you suddenly think of some, uh, some records management related question, then please grab me. I'll be glad to talk about it. Yeah, that's right, RM Goggles. All right. <laughs>